So we're going back to the knoll just before and after it was mulched. This is giving you some perspective and as you can see directly in front of you is one load from the muck heap. On the right plenty of grass and then it just goes into a weed pit, really degraded area with ants and lots of weeds. As you can see, lots of lantana. This area is on a really good slope. And what I'm doing is I'm wanting to mulch over the top of the weeds because these weeds contain something that Mother Nature wants us wants to put back into the soil. Take note of the size of these banana plants. Um, they were planted in December. So what I did is I put an advert out and said, does anybody that's got a horse, if I park my box trailer with you, can you fill it up with your sawdust and your manure? And someone literally five minutes down the road said, yeah, go for it. So a bit of value adding there to the soil. Initially I was going to dig on contour, get a ripper in, uh, but the old boys in the area said, look, you're just going to pull the rocks up to the top. So I changed my mind and I am emptying the muck trailer at the top of the slope so that it naturally, that gravity just naturally takes it down and, uh, and I'll just plant on contour beneath all of those nutrients and it seems to be working. So this area is manageable for me. It is on um, a hill but it's not too steep so I can pretty well drive my ute up and down. I could probably drive it sideways. I wouldn't trust my tractor sideways though. That's the Kaffir line. Again, just take note of the size. This is a finger lime. And the one at the end is a lemon. So overall, it looks like it's a bit of a mission, but it's fairly easy access for me because that's another important aspect, is that I've got to be able to get here and be able to work the area fairly easily. These are the soybean bales of mulch and they've been basically waiting for a year because of course I've had so much rain I haven't been able to get a bobcat down here to help me. Uh, I chose the soybean because I did an experiment up around the house and the mulch lasts, it's really coarse, so it lasts a long time and breaks down very slowly, which is perfect. But as you can see, because these have been baled for a year with a lot of rain, oh man, that's just almost, that's just ready to go, that compost, it's, it's brilliant. So I'm looking forward to getting it actually laid on the degraded land and see what happens. It's going to be great soil organic matter because the soil here is predominantly bacteria and it would be great to get some organic matter to stimulate the fungal content and of course carbon will increase the moisture carrying capacity and overall I'm hoping that nature will basically do the job of a gardener. Bobcat finally gets here. It has been so wet that we just haven't been able to get any machinery on this property whatsoever. So it was really good to see him being able to drive around. He's just putting them, I wanted them at the top of the slope so that the nutrients, as it decomposes, the nutrients slide down the hill with the help of gravity and rain and I did manage to roll a couple of them down the hill uh, they they yeah some of them were just 
weren't bales anymore they they just didn't really roll but this one did and so that's how I managed to cover it it's all a bit all over the place there you go there's the banana plants just for you to have a look at the size of them again just to get a bit of perspective but I was really happy with this and that's it that's the knoll and let's get the microbes and the insects doing something now then this is a little bit of fun here but as you can see uh, <laughs> it is literally like digging into concrete you cannot use a shovel you can use a crowbar if you like, but my favourite tool is, is the mattock. Uh, really crumbly clay, rock hard, very little moisture. And this is why I've got a good set of guns on me. And I just wanted for you to see from start to finish what it's like digging a hole. just that final lift once I've got it deep enough <laughs> it's quite funny watching myself dig a hole I just want you to uh, come and have a look at it so there you go compaction beyond belief <laughs> hole in concrete and really tight that's telling me there's a calcium magnesium imbalance the ratio is not right so there's more magnesium than calcium and I'm hoping that well my theory is that by planting specific types of plants and adding some soil organic matter that will help to increase the calcium This is the soybean mulch. It was industrially grown. I'm just having a smell of it there. Okay, now just have a watch of this. If you blink, you'll miss it. Oh, I actually <laughs> thought I was going to fall wow. over when I, I sunk the mattock into this ground. Wow. I was absolutely flabbergasted. I don't know whether you can see that going. I mean, it's literally like cutting melted butter. That was crazy. I wasn't expecting that. And so have a look. See how it's just, it's instantly different. And it was holding a lot of moisture. Smelt different, felt different. Still got a long way to go, of course. And it's still tight. There's still magnesium is still higher than the calcium. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> got a bit excited because that's my first worm I've ever seen or ever found in the paddock. But I can actually grab the soil and, and rip it up. Whereas in the other hole, there's no way I would have probably skinned my fingers. Okay, so then this is the muck heap that you saw in the at the very beginning of the video. So it's been here a little bit longer, not drastically longer. But this is sawdust and horse huh. manure and urea. And it smelt good. Out of everything, this one smelt the best. And that layer there is the bit that's actually composting. So between the big pile and the soil, there's a layer that's composting. And uh, you'll hear me hit concrete again. Oh, and this piece was absolutely dry. bone dry. 
so even drier than the first hole where I was going oh. into concrete. Oh, I, I cut up a worm there, unfortunately. So that was my second worm, but I killed it. But you can see that it's not as moist as the second hole with the mulch. Uh, but it that it was doing a really good job with the composting. And I'm just going to show you the profile so you can get a better idea. So you'll see that's where the soil is. Ooh. Yeah, the layer the top layer of soil and that's where it's composting obviously the microbes and insects are interacting there and then the clay is wet just underneath the composting bit and then here a bit deeper it is bone dry and really crumbly just back into concrete again so now that I've dug my holes For this particular one, I thought I'd give the plant a little bit of help. So if it is going into really degraded ground, all I could really do at that time was to add some of the mulch. Because I didn't know when I was next going to deliver another load of, of muck heap. Because that's my plan, is just to keep delivering the muck heap at the top of the hill and allowing it to compost and, and leach, all the nutrients leach down. So this is me planting a um, blood orange with one hand. <laughs> that, that's quite difficult. Just have a look at how deep green these leaves are, because of course this plant has been propagated in the industrial way using synthetic fertilizers but just note how green they are this is where my battery from my solar panel blew up and sprinkled battery acid all over it so those leaves are a little bit burnt and of course I got to show you that <sighs> my black ants are real <laughs> I must have hit a nest Three months later, there you go, have a look at those um, banana trees, that's three months growth in amongst a pile of weeds and you can see there are more piles of, of muck heap. The tall weeds that are spiky, they're called devil's fig and they are excellent at holding the ground together so I'm not concerned that they are here, they're doing me a great service in this really wet weather. So it's phenomenal how these banana trees are growing in this weed pit and you'd think there's competition. So that's the finger lime. I don't think the finger lime's done as well purely because it's been so wet. In this time that you're seeing, we've had 1300 mil which is basically our annual rainfall in these few months. So that's the kaffir lime, and then this was, this was planted later, that's the blood orange. And then behind it is the lemon. And you'll see how much that's grown. And then of course the banana plants. Now I'm 1 meter 70, so in three months you can see that it's gone from knee height to well over my head. So I'm really, really impressed with how the weeds have actually encouraged the plants to grow because the soil is, everything's interacting under the ground um, and this, I believe this busts the myth that the weeds are competition. So there you go, this is the blood orange that I planted because you can see that the acid has actually burnt through the leaves as there's the holes there but it gives you again um, some context as to how well this plant's done. Remember this has had no added fertilizer of any description and all I'm doing is just stomping down the weeds around it so it's getting some sunlight 
but I'm really impressed and note how light the, the leaves have got in colour. So as you can see, so in February when we planted it, that top leaf got munched and the bottom leaves had the acid burn. But just hold that in your head. Can you see how dark those leaves are as well? Just to have a look at the leaves. See, they've gone a little bit lighter in colour. And you'll see that the, that's a bit of acid burn and the munch leaf. So, But you can see how healthy the plant looks. I mean, I think, in considering I have done nothing to these plants and it's just rained and I've just kept putting the muck heap on it. So my plan of action is to compare the soil test with the leaf test. So I'll do it in those three areas where I actually dug those holes or very close to it. And then with the plants that I've planted very close to those areas, I'm going to do a leaf test. I can compare the different areas of where the holes were dug, the different soils. I can compare how those plants have done in comparison to each other in those different soils. And I can also compare where the plants and the soil tests in each of those areas, how out of whack they are, or if that the minerals in the soil is actually, being, is, is actually available for the plants because there is a difference between your minerals being present and actually being available to the plant so yes it will be very very interesting and the level of calcium will be very interesting as well because I want to see if the calcium has actually increased without me doing anything apart from planting plants and having the either the mulch or the muck heap either one of those. It will be very interesting to see if that calcium has actually increased. So that will be my next video. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I've, I've just tried to make them a little bit of fun. If you haven't seen my first video, I strongly recommend that you watch it. It is um, a year apart from December 2020 to December 2021. And it will show you what a, a year full of rain has done to a degraded landscape. And that's when you'll see, wow, it was, it was pretty bare and really overgrazed. And then after a year of rain, well, I couldn't really do anything, um, but how well it sprung back on its own. All right, well, I'll leave you with that.